So I wanna do a short recap of what we have seen so far with these trigonometric integrals. If we have an integral that only involves sines and cosines, so we have some integral sine to the a of x times cosine of b to the x dx, if you ever have something like that, if the power of the sine is odd, if the power of the sine is odd, you're gonna borrow one of the signs, so you do a du, and that's gonna force then the u to be cosine of x. And then you can transition all the other signs into cosines using um, the Pythagorean identity, sine squared x is equal to one minus cosine squared x. Now, if the roles are reversed, if the power of the cosine is odd, Right In that situation, you're going to borrow one of the cosines to do a u substitution. So you want du to be negative cosine. You might need a double negative as the sign's not there. Uh, so if du is giving negative cosine, then you want u to be sine. And then you have to transition all of the cosines into sines using the Pythagorean identity, cosine squared x equals 1 minus sine squared. Now, what if, what if the power of sine and cosine are both odd? Well, then you get a pick. You can do whichever one you want. Um, isn't life great when you have choices? Now, the third possibility is what if, this is the one we don't like as much, what if both the powers of sine and cosine, what if they're both even? Well, in that situation, you're gonna have to use the half angle identities. Sine squared x equals one half, one minus cosine of two x, and cosine squared, uh, of x equals one half one plus cosine two x. So what you're gonna do is if you have only even powers and sines and cosines, you have to transition using the half angle. You're gonna replace the sine, you'll replace a sine squared with this cosine two x, this cosine squared with the cosine two x. Multiply, foil out that thing if you have to, and this will now give you a new expression um, involving cosines of two x. And then reevaluate the situation at that moment. If you have an odd cosines, then you go back to case B right here. If you, after this, have an even number of cosines, then you're gonna have to repeat this process. You know, rinse and repeat until you're completed. Um, so what this strategy does is it tells us that if we have any product of sine and cosines, who cares what the exponents are, we can calculate its antiderivative. Now, the higher the exponents are, the harder this process is, but using U substitutions, and the appropriate trigonometric identities, that is the Pythagorean and half angle identities, we can calculate any uh, integral involving a product of sine x and cosine x. And that'll then end our lecture 10. Uh, we'll talk some more about trigonometric integrals in the next lecture, number 11, so stay tuned for that. Um, if you have any questions on any part of this, of this lecture or any part of this lecture series, feel free to post those questions in the comments below. Uh, I'll be glad to answer them. Click the like button, subscribe if you want to learn more about these calculus videos in the future. And I will see you then. Bye, everyone.